Hey there everybody, Nick Shabazz here, back with another review for you of this little guy right here. Well, not exactly little, this is the Spydeco Shaman, and I know what you're thinking, Nick, haven't you already done the Shaman review? Yeah, well, I was thinking about it the other day, and uh, every decision that we make creates a parallel universe where other possibilities unfold. And so, uh, by choosing to do another Shaman review, I figure... Uh, every iteration of Nick Shabazz that you see will eventually cover all the good, great, bad, and the ugly of the Spydeco Shaman itself. And uh, let's get started here. Just gonna roll in the uh, Spydeco Delica as a way of size comparison. And, uh, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> That's right, the jig's up. Hey there, everybody. I'm Joe, and you are watching Ink and Iron. And uh, I hope you have enjoyed my little parody of. Nick Shabazz there, and uh, we will get started some seriously now with the uh, review of the Spyderco Little Native. Uh, if you like my humor and uh, my review style, why you go ahead and hit like, hit the bell to get my notifications when I upload new videos, and uh, check out my Patreon for more content. And we are talking about the Spyderco Little Native today because it is a fidget-friendly, super fun, super slicey little knife that... Uh, I never actually expected, so let me get this Spyderco man bug out of here. Pretty convincing mini Delica, if you ask me. And welcome back to regular old Ink and Iron. I am once again Joe, and you are once again watching my channel. And uh, I'm going to roll in the specifications for this knife here. Uh, I did take measurements of this exact blade, the little native, so uh, you're about to get those so you can know what this knife's all about. Okay, now that you've got those measurements, let's borrow a term from uh, Nothing Fancy, another reviewer that uh, I quite enjoy watching. The philosophy of use of this little knife right here is definitely going to be a uh, dedicated EDC blade. As you can see, the overall length, like, it fits in my hand, and I wear about a medium-sized glove. So uh, yeah, it's pretty compact, carries well in the pocket, and uh, let me see if I can roll in a shot of pocket carry real quick. Here we are at my crotch. <laughs> Unfortunately, you're gonna have to look at it. And uh, here's the knife going into the pocket. And these are rather thick pants. These are painter's pants. So uh, yeah, they're built to withstand a lot. But pretty easy retrieval. It's maybe a little, little finicky to get in, but uh, it will go in there and it won't rip up your pants on the way out. Okay, now that we've seen it in the pocket, Let's get talking about what this blade is made of. So the steel here is CPM S30V, Spyderco's go-to steel for their uh, new or like, you know, premiered models. Uh, if they're just trying out a new knife model, they tend to use S30V, and it is an overall pretty good stainless steel. Uh, we do have a full flat grind coming down from a stock thickness of about 3.2 millimeters. And uh, just as a way of comparison here, have a pair of three. This is 3.7 millimeters, so it's not the thinnest blade stock, but it is a little bit thinner than uh, its sort of uh, bigger brothers and sisters, if you will. The uh, edge can definitely get to a mirror polish. It might be a little hard to make out considering all this weird lighting I have going on, but trust me, that is a mirrored edge and uh, quite slicey. There's a little choil down here for comfort. No jimping on the spine or on the choil, which makes it quite comfortable in the hand. Um, the deployment here is by way of a compression lock. Oh, I lied. There is just a just a touch of jimping that kind of it disappears in with this liner jimping right here, as you can see. Um, when you're putting your hand on that, you can't tell where the blade starts and where the handle ends. Okay, as I said, we have a compression lock and we have a little bit of intrusion from a nubbin on the compression lock. Now keep in mind this is the native series and uh, the series is kind of known for that. The Spyderco Shaman is notorious for having a nub that comes and smacks your finger on the compression lock. Um, I am still looking at getting one of those, so yeah, we'll see how that knife works out for me. But uh, anyway, let's talk about the blade length here. Okay, let me roll in my ruler. So, this is just to give you a sense of uh, how big this thing is. 
and uh, not very would be my uh, my two cents. The uh, blade length is about 67 millimeters or uh, 2.65 inches. The overall length is about 150 millimeters or six inches. Okay, now let's move on to a very important topic for me anyway, because it regards slicing performance is the behind the edge thickness. I always try and measure this metric right behind the uh, edge grind here. So let me open up my pair of three and point out what I'm talking about. So here's the edge, right? And then right here, right where we get to this bead blasted finish, this is where I'm taking the measurement for behind the edge thickness. And on this particular blade, it's gonna be on average 0 0.62 millimeters, which is about 24 thousandths of an inch. So it's definitely not, uh, you know, the sliciest knife in the world. However, having the blade shape as a leaf gives you basically all belly. So it is quite good at slicing open your um, daily fare. You know, mail, plastic, tape, boxes, cardboard, all that kind of thing. The lock up here is solid. It's about as solid as you can expect from a compression lock. You can't hear any wiggle, but you can feel it a bit, which is not unusual. I even have that on like the Spyderco Caribbean, the Yojimbo 2. All of my compression locks have just a little bit of side-to-side uh, -side play in this plane here. Um, up and down, totally rock solid, and uh, it's what you expect from a well-done Spyderco knife that, that's facilitated by this stop pin here that really keeps that blade nice and snug in that uh, vertical direction. So I'm not worried about this closing up on me during normal cutting. The performance. Well, let's do a little demo. I'm gonna start trying to roll in some actual footage of cutting here. So this is just some cardboard. This was a uh, pizza box, I believe. So let's take it. And I have just put an edge on this. So slices pretty well. Like I said, it's not the sliciest knife in the world. So let's try and cut a curve here. And this is gonna look sketchy, sorry. Yeah, it, it definitely binds up in this way because of that wide blade. So uh, let's see. Yeah, using the tip you can cut curves, but as soon as you start to get into the meat of this blade, it's uh, definitely not the prettiest slicer in the world. But again, for just normal EDC, just got a package from Amazon or whatever, it should suit your needs. And now that we're cleaned up, let's do a little paper cut here. Pretty good. And uh, it will shave, and I just want to show you, let's get some of these fine hairs off my hand here. Yeah, see that? See all that hair? Yeah, piece of cake. Okay, so we know this blade can take a good edge. What about sharpenability? Well, it's S30V, so uh, I have no problem sharpening it. My typical system is some Spyderco bench stones, and they make short work of even steels like Maximet. So this is gonna be pretty average to sharpen. It's gonna be a little bit harder than your 8CR13 MOVs and uh, that kind of thing, but uh, definitely much easier than Maximet. Okay, now let's roll into a discussion about the handle. The materials here are actually G10, and then nested steel liners, which I am a huge fan of. It really cuts down on what would otherwise be a very like bulky design. And uh, yeah, you can actually see some milling here down in the handle, which is a nice touch. Um, for a small knife, it has a good weight in the hand without being um, like overwhelming. Like it doesn't feel like you have solid slabs of steel under here. It feels like you just have a very secure handle. The construction, as you might expect, is very good from Spyderco, the fit and finish is nice and clean. And like I said, this is a seconds knife. So uh, I'm really not sure what was, what went wrong here. Um, unfortunately, we do have uh, T6 hardware that's holding the knife together. So that's not the best, but we do have a T8 pivot. So uh, that is a little bit of redemption there. We do have a loop over wire clip. Like most of Spyderco's clips, it is very nice. And uh, somebody told me that this is like a non-scratch design. Um, I haven't verified that. Maybe we'll go out to my car one day and just 
scratch it up because my car has <laughs> tons of scratches. I know I haven't shown it on the channel, but uh, maybe I will sometime. The traction plan is pretty light. Um, I think what's helping you most here is this handle design, which is typical of the native. Let me get a little comparison here. For those of you who are my fans on the channel who recognize this guy, this is my native 5 salt. And so we can see the design influence here. We have a forward finger choil and then a little bit of a cutout for second, maybe third fingers if you have small hands. And then just sort of a gentle curve here to accommodate, you know, whatever f extra fingers you got. <laughs> maybe you've got six fingers, I don't know. If that's the case, you will have probably something hanging off the back of this knife. But uh, I have plenty of room. Like I said, I have a medium glove uh, hand. So I have plenty of room on the Native 5. And then uh, the little Native here, I can actually get a full grip if I choke up into this choil. So yeah, really not bad. If I choke back, it's kind of a three finger knife. There's not the most here to grip with my pinky. Um, that doesn't bother me too much. One of my favorite knives is the uh, Dragonfly 2, which I'll roll in for size comparison. And uh, that's a very nice knife and it really only accommodates three fingers. As far as traction goes, the G10 is Spyderco's typical G10 that you'd find on like a Manix or a paramilitary. Um, it isn't the grippiest thing in the world. It's not like Cold Steel's G10 where it's gonna rip up your pants, um, but it does feel good. <laughs> I'm sorry that's not like the best, uh, you know, information for you, but here, you can listen, listen for yourself. And you can see it even takes off a little bit of my uh, thumbnail there. So it does have some abrasive qualities if that's something you're looking for in a knife. But uh, I find that this G10 offers me plenty of grip for a blade this size. I'm not, you know, going to cut down a tree with this thing. Let's talk blade to handle ratio real quick. So uh, the native series is kind of biased towards the handle just a little bit. So what I'm talking about here is that the length of the handle compared to the length of the blade is a little bit longer. Um, that's not necessarily a bad thing since it does give you a comfortable grip um, and it's definitely not doing, you know, what uh, some other knives are, are guilty of where it's like short little blade and then big old handle like it's a, you know, Cali legal <laughs> auto or something. So I think it's a pretty good blade to handle ratio. We're almost one to one, but not quite. As I said, the clip is a loop over design and it is right or left hand carry, but tip up only, and I think that makes sense. And one nice thing about this clip is it does not make a concession for a um, lanyard hole. So, once again, the uh, native 5 here. You can see there's a lanyard hole through here, and then the clip is forced to loop over the lanyard hole. I am glad we don't even bother with a lanyard on a knife this small because you shouldn't be going so hard that you're worried this knife will be flying out of your hand. And uh, one discussion topic you know I enjoy is whether or not you can use it in your right or left hand. And uh, honestly, for me, this little native is very good in my left hand, and that is accomplished by its being small. <laughs> the uh, compression lock for me is not necessarily a lefty-friendly lock design, However, when you make it this small, it's quite easy to uh, get all your fingers involved. And uh, you could even work it sort of like a back lock. So you can kind of put a finger down here. Whoops. Come on. Finger down there, release the blade, and then close it. So uh, I know I didn't make that look super graceful. And uh, honestly, I kind of prefer to grip it like this. But it is doable with the left hand and might be easier if I switch the pocket clip to the other side. All right, and now we're going to discuss price point as we roll in some size comparisons. Got a pair of three lightweight. And because it's here, native five. So the MSRP on this knife right here is $180, which as we know from Spyderco's MSRPs, is definitely an exaggeration of the price that you will find out there in the real world. I went just a minute before shooting this video and checked Blade HQ, and uh, before I tell you that price, let me roll in some more knives. So Blade HQ's price is 140 bucks, and here's the small steel wheel cut jack for you to enjoy. Um, at 140 bucks, the fit and finish and the blade steel 
are maybe a little expensive. This is the open L. This is the number eight. If, uh, where is it? There you go, number eight. Um, 140 bucks is pretty steep for this. Now I got this at the second sale, and uh, the price there was sixty dollars, which is honestly fairly high for the second sale. Anyway, um, I got a Spyderco Manix 2 in Maxima for about 75 bucks at the second sale. So when I saw that the little natives were 60, I was like, what? What is going on here? Why are these knives so expensive? What justifies it being sixty dollars? And um, I picked it up, got it in hand, and I gotta say, this fall shut action is just so good. And you can even sort of Benchmade style flip it open by depressing the tab back here and then flicking it in and out. Whoa, <laughs> trying to do it in this little like five inch gap between me and the camera. So as you can see in here, it's just a rock solid smooth action. The Spyderco Dragonfly, and then a little Victorinox Classic to uh, finish us up. So at 140 bucks, I would probably try and find this knife on the secondary market, or if you're so inclined, maybe try and find a Sprint Run because the action is good. It's very comfortable and it's very inviting to put in your pocket because it'll fit in almost any pocket you've got. Um, uh, I'll actually see if it'll fit in my fifth pocket or watch pocket on my jeans. Let me check that real quick. Okay, so I don't know uh, how big your watch pocket is, but on these painter's pants it's quite deep so I can sink it all the way. If you had to ask me, the knife is probably going to ride about here in a normal watch pocket, so maybe not the best option. I would probably just throw it in the normal pocket. Okay, but uh, yeah, what I'm going to say here is the best bet is to get this on the secondary market, a sprint run, or uh, heck, even hit somebody up who's going to the Spyderco second sale and see if they'll grab one for you because it is quite a fidget friendly knife. Um, it slices well, as you saw. It's not the best slicer in the world, but you know, it's not built to be. It's built to be a little everyday companion. And uh, honestly, if you have, you know, friends who collect knives, they will be impressed with this blade as well. Um, when we found this at the second sale about two years ago, um, me and three of my friends all got one. And uh, yeah, I think it was totally worth it. All right, well, that's all I've got for you. Thank you for joining me on this review. I've been Joe, and you've been watching Ink and Iron. For more content like this, feel free to subscribe, check out my Patreon, and uh, don't forget to hit the bell, get notifications when I upload new stuff. All right, thanks for joining me, and I'll catch you on the next video. Peace.